Hi, my name's Kevin and welcome to another video. This is part three of a small series I'm doing about the cutter grinder which I've made. And um, some people have asked me about the line boring side of things. So I thought I'd uh, show you more sort of details about that. So we'll go over to the bench and um, I'll just show you what I mean, you know, by line boring and um, we'll have a look at the lathe and the setup for that. Well, here's the main part with those bushings in which I line board. Um, the, the shaft is 25 millimeters exact and that's true all the way through and the bushings obviously they've got to match that you know precisely because uh, the last thing you want in a cutter grinder is any sort of slop you know any sort of looseness in that movement otherwise that will show up when you grind your flutes not so much on the ends of the end mills but the flutes themselves you know if, as you start to twist this in if you've got any play in, in the, these bearings here, that will show up in the flute as you grind it. And then obviously, if you machine a piece of metal, you're gonna see that, you know, it's gonna be like a line going through the piece of metal if there's a discrepancy in that flute. So what I'd done was um, machine these bushings a bit oversized and then placed them in the lathe, which we'll have a look at shortly, and then line bore them to get them exactly both the same. Uh, the thing is, you, you wouldn't be able to machine both of these bushes exact to this size and then, you know, press them into the aluminium or in my case, I um, done a shrink fit because whatever happens, you know, you only want them bushings to be slightly, you know, cocked or whatever. And this shaft isn't going to run through, you know, you're going to, that's either going to be tight or, you know, it's not going to run at all. So and you wouldn't be able to get those bushings in completely square because you never know whether you've got a bit of you know tolerance here you know that may be leaning in very slightly or out or you know when you press the bearings in you may not press them in fully you know true or square to one another so the best thing i found was to line bore those and um you know so that that works nice and smoothly So what we'll do now, we'll have a look over at the lathe and I'll show you the setup for that. Well, here we are at the lathe. We've got the boring bar all set up in the lathe so you can see how it's um, you know, installed into the lathe. And then this is the actual workpiece which was bored um, using that cutter. And these we bored those two bearings there. If you look back at my first video in this series, you'll see all this in action and me actually boring these two bearings out. So what I'll do is I'll take this out and we'll have a look at it in a bit more detail. So in the chuck, we've got a piece of stock, which has got a 60 degree point turned onto it. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, like most lathe chucks don't run 100% true. You know, this is an older machine. And even though this machine is still good, I've got about a thou of run out in the chuck. So the, the best thing to do is actually, you know, turn the taper on or a point on there, and then that will be dead center. And if I pulled this, the towel stock up, both of those points would meet exact. On the boring bar itself, we've got a lathe dog, and obviously that's got a hole in the end of that, both ends. So that can then go on both of those points. And so now this piece of bar, um, it is nice and straight. I, I did check it before machining. But this bar is dead level and dead true to the axis on the machine. And I've also swept it with a dial indicator on the um, saddle there just to make sure everything is true. So what happens now is you see, as we run through both of these bearings, because this is a lot more accurate, accurate way of machining this type of thing, both of those bearings are gonna be exactly the same. So that's a boring bar and that's how that boring bar works. The only other thing was the cutter side of it, if I just get an Allen key. Um, this is quite a small boring bar, uh, and normally on a, on a bigger boring bar, you'd have, a, you'd have a, um, a bolt in the back here, which you can wind through, and then you put a dial indicator on here, and you can wind it into you know, whatever increments you want, whether you want to wind it in a thou or a couple of thou or whatever, you know, to get your final cuts and that sort of thing but this is right a small one so i didn't have that so i just all i done was i undone the lock and key uh, lock and bolt here and then just moved it out and i had to measure it 
off a square which was all set up on the lathe and um, but it, it still worked out fine you know you just got to take your time recheck your measurements you know and that'll, that'll that'll work out good so anyway so that's how the boring bar worked and as you can see that would spin round like that and this is all mounted up I mounted this on the um, on the saddle itself on an angle plate and obviously again you have to measure it to get it spot on and square and whatever and then you know sweep it with a dial indicator and then um, you know that will that will machine out nice and true so here we are back at the bench and another part I made was the finger itself and um, what this ha what this actually does the finger sits under the back side of the cutter so something like that as you can see and then obviously the, the stone or the wheel itself is on this front cut and this edge here so as we move that through that will then spin and rotate the cutter and what that allows is that this edge here on the flutes that will then allow that to stay in contact with the wheel and obviously it's got to be accurate as well so that's what a finger's for so this just slides into a reamed hole and then to hold that in place or to lock it off is a piece of steel which slots down through that hole there and actually bites onto the top of the shaft so you never want steel on steel otherwise um, that's going to start to dig into this steel and then obviously it'll be a job to move through so i've silver soldered a piece of brass on here brass is softer than steel so that will wear first before the shaft so we'll pop that in the hole and then that's just locked off with a grub screw. I will uh, make another screw for the top of here with, you know, with like a thumb wheel on the top, which will make it easier. So if we lock that off, so that's now locked, you see, and that can't spin. No, it will do, I ain't locked off tight enough, but you can see what, what I mean. So that's now locked, so that won't spin. So that's that front part. Then on the rear here, we've actually got the mechanism for locking this in place. Uh, which you have seen in the previous video so on here we've got 90 degree divisions one two three four so i can do a two fluted cutter or a four fluted cutter on them with this lock and ring so this is nothing special it's just a piece of steel which goes through the aluminium and locked in place with a um, cap screw so we actually lock that in place so it hits on this you know on one of the 90 degree divisions so again, so nothing special there. So anyway, so that's um, if that's explained in those few parts. Um, the next video will probably be, you know, the actual machine running, and I'll show you, you know, the actual cutter being cut itself or sharpened itself. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.